Here's a coding interview problem from Facebook. You're given an array of unique items, so there are no duplicates in this array, and you're supposed to write a function that takes this array of unique items, or you can see as a set of unique items given in an array format, and your function should find all of its subsets. So for example, one potential subset is an empty set, and another subset of this entire set is the given set itself, one, two, and the two other subsets are single item subsets, one and two. Now your function doesn't have to return anything, but it's supposed to print out all of the subsets in say standard output. And you can print them in any order you'd like. So if you decide to print the empty set, you'll have an empty line to represent the empty set. And if you decide to print a set of one after that, you'll have one comma. And with a set of two, you'll have two comma. I'm ending these lines with a comma just for simplicity, just so that it's easier to implement your function. And if you print one, two at the end, you'll have one comma, two comma. So that's the problem. Again, you can print them in any order you'd like. So think about this problem for a second, pause the video right here, and then come back to the video. Now, the first thing you might consider when you think about this problem is how many subsets are there for the given array or for the given set? The answer is there are two to the power of n subsets, where n is the number of items in the array. So this is going to be two to the power of two, which is four. If n is equal to two, as in this example, one and two. And let me quickly explain why that's the case. Let's say we're trying to construct a subset out of the given array, for example, one and two. For us to do that, there are a few decisions that we need to make. First of all, should we include one, the first item in this new subset that we're trying to construct? And then the second decision that we need to make is should we include two in this new subset? So there are two decisions that we need to make and for each decision or for each item, there are two available choices. So the total number of available choices for us as we try to construct a new subset from this given array is two times two, which is four, this number right here. And it's the same when we are trying to construct a subset out of an array of n items as well. There are two choices that we could potentially make for each item. And since there are n items, there are two to the power of n potential choices or two to the power of n potential subsets. If we visualize this process, it might look like this. With this idea, we can construct all of the subsets by starting with an empty set. And I'm going to use this example, one and two, to explain this idea. Once we have an empty set, we need to ask ourselves, should we add one to this set, the empty set? And if the answer is no, we'll still have an empty set. And if the answer is yes, we'll have a set of one. After that, for each of those subsets or each of those sets, we need to ask ourselves, should we add two to each of those sets? If the answer is yes, we'll have a set of two if we start with an empty set and a set of one and two if we start with a set of one and so on. And this way we can construct all of the four subsets for this particular example. So when you see this graph, you might say, well, it looks kind of like a recursion tree. So maybe we can solve this problem somehow using recursion. Let's see what that solution might look like. Now I'm going to explain my solution in pseudcode. I'm going to write a function called all subsets, which is going to take given array as the input, for example, one and two, this array, and it's not going to return anything, but it will print out all of its subsets. To construct all of its subsets, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to start with an empty set. So the first step in all subsets is going to be initialize an empty set, but to represent each of these sets, for example, this empty set and this set of one, we're going to use an array instead of a set data structure. And it's going to be clear why we are doing this later. So for example, if you have a set of two, and if you're given this array one and two, 
a set of two can be represented with null and two. Null means that one is not in this set, and two means that two is in this set. And this way, we can represent any subset of this array with an array of the same length. So to initialize this initial empty set, at the beginning of all subsets, we can initialize an array whose length is the same as given array's length or given array that length. And the content could be anything, but it can be, for example, now now if the given array's length is two. And we're going to define a helper function, which is going to call itself recursively. We're going to call it helper, and it's going to take three arguments. Given array, which is the given array, which never changes. Subset, which represents the state of the current subset that we're constructing. So for example, this empty subset, or this set of one represented in an array format. And i is going to represent the index of the current item that we're examining. So if i is equal to zero, for example, that means that we're trying to decide if we should include this item in the current subset that we're trying to construct. And if i is equal to one, that means that we're currently examining this item at index one. Now, the first thing we need to do in the helper function is we need to check if i is equal to given array's length or a given array dot length. If that's the case, for example, in this example, if i is equal to two, which is given array's length, that would mean that i is pointing outside of array, which means we already went through this whole array and finished constructing one of these subsets. So at that point, we can just print the current subset we have with say, print subset of subset. And here I'm assuming that we've already defined a function called print set, which prints out all of the non-null items in the given subset array. And of course, in our main function, all subsets, after defining an empty subset, represent it as an array, and assigning it to subset, we need to call the helper function with given array, the empty subset, and zero. And of course, we need to start with zero because that's the first index. Now, in the helper function, if i is not equal to given array's length yet, for example, if we're right here where i would be one, what should we do? If i is equal to one, that means that we're trying to decide if we should include two in this subset that we're constructing. So we'll need to call helper twice recursively, once without adding two, and the second time after adding two to this subset. Now to represent the first recursive call, where we don't add the current item that we're examining to the subset, we can just set the item at the current index in the subset array to now. We can do this with subset square brackets i equals now. And after that, we can call helper recursively with given array subset, which is the updated subset, i plus one to go to the next index. And to represent the second recursive call, where we do add the current item that we're examining to the subset, we can set the item at index i in the subset array to the current item, for example, two. We can do this with, of course, subset square brackets i equals given array square brackets i, and then just like before, call helper again recursively with given array subset and i plus one. And that's my solution. But what's the benefit of using an array instead of a set structure to represent each subset? The benefit is that it becomes easier to keep track of the current state of the subset by using an array instead of a set structure. For example, subset might start at now now, but as we go down this recursion tree, at this point, when we are here, it'll be now two. And you might ask, what happens once we go down this branch, the second recursive call from the first call? Well, at that point, we don't have to worry at all about the current state of this array because once we get to the end of this tree, we'll override every single element anyway. So for example, once we get here, this element will be overrided with one, and this element 
will be now. So as you can see, by using an array, we have to worry less about what the state of this subset looks like or how the state has been affected by previous recursive calls. And this is not necessarily the case with a set structure. It is possible to implement these functions using a set structure, but it's just that if you do that, you need to be extra careful about which recursive calls are made before which ones. Now, once you understand that solution, I'd recommend that you try solving this problem with an iterative solution instead. So try solving this problem without recursion at all. And once you have a good solution with that, let me know in the comment section below. Also, if there's any other interview question I should cover in the future, let me know at csdojo.io slash contribute, where you can let me know the question anonymously. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.